Hello, welcome to this webinar. I'm Habodi. I'm the professor of the media technology at the KTH, Sweden. Today, the topic is the unreasonable effectiveness of the big data. In this talk, I will talk about the three topics. The first is what is big data? Second is data-driven approach. And the last one is the, the power of the big data. Okay, let's see what is the big data. <clears throat> Here you see a definition from Wikipedia. It said that big data means big. It means that the data set they are too large or complex to deal with with the traditional way. For the, furthermore, it also means that big data is a large body of information that cannot be comprehended when used in small amount only. But this is just one definition. Unfortunately, there is no well accepted definition. While there are different <clears throat> definitions of big data, we do have a standard set of units to quantify data sets the volume. The fundamental unit is the byte. When we discuss mobile data, we normally talk about megabytes, gigabytes. However, in the context of the big data, we typically discuss bit bytes, and or even Z byte. Today, when people are talking about big data, it's not just the amount or volume of data. They all say another two ways. Here you see the three ways of big data, volume, variety, and velocity. The three ways have been widely accepted as the key data management challenges associated with the big data. Let's look at the volume first. This is how much data will be generated annually by the 2025. See, the data is growing because smart computer programs, which use machine learning, and the artificial intelligence need the increasing data produced by our digital devices. In addition to the volume, another crucial factor is variety, the complexity. That comes from the various sources, each with its own unique forms or structures which normally we could unstructure the data. To extract knowledge, all those types of data need to be linked together. So, as I show here, to create a complete profile of a customer, we need to combine all their data to form a unified image of the person. For example, the data from the bank, the data from social media, the, the data from shopping. We could build with those kind of data, we can build a single view to the customer. Why the volume and the unstructured nature of the big data present the challenge. Actually, they are not just, it's just a part of the story. So why it's hard to define the big data? This is because we are not only discussing its property, but rather recognize 
recognize it as a kind of a revolutionary force. Thus, we we'll reshape our lifestyles, working dynamics, and the cognitive process. Essentially, big data represent a paradigm shift. So that's uh, called the data-driven approach that will transfer both our mindsets and actions. So therefore, if someone asks you what is big data, now our answer is big data is a new way of thinking and doing. Now we are talking about the second topic, data-driven approach. A data-driven approach means that make decisions, uncovering insights, or solving the problems, mostly based on the data analysis, evidence, and observations, rather rely only on the theory. It's more emphasize deriving knowledge and actions from the patterns, trends, and the valuable information in the data. The first relevant question is why that driven approach is important today. To comprehend today's world, we must acknowledge there are three key players, humans, sense, and information. The dynamics of our world are shaped by the interplay among those three players. Traditionally, in our engineering reality, our primary focus has been on physical object, and our education has been emphasis on the rational thinking. The things in our research and education focus include all physical objects like uh, mobile phones, base stations, we have been give, given a toolbox and educated how to use them. Now the fox has been changed and today it's more on the human beings. So we are now witnessing an influx of the data from social media. There is a growing buzz about the huge amount of data being, being generated every minute. Just like uh, Jeffrey Nikki predicted, just within a few years, people data will be 90% of the world collective data. So, so then we see that one of the central topics is about human behavior analysis. For example, at the Spotify, their vision is to provide the right music for every moment. But how do we know that? What is the right music for you in any moment? It's need data mining. It's needed to know who you are, what you are doing, and what your moment is. We can observe a shift in our research topics or questions, moving from traditional objective questions to more subjective ones. For instance, here, we want to know if the person is interested or engaged. What is his intention? So this is challenge. Why this is a challenge? Simply because traditionally, the tools in our toolbox are more like a Fourier transform. Unfortunately, they can only handle physical sense. So, so we have been educated with a rational mindset, learning Newton's law of the motion, which can help us understand the entire world. The laws are incredibly powerful, 
and can even predict the motion of the planets. Today, Elon Musk showed us how to land a rocket by use the, the law of the motion. That's very successful, but now when dealing with the humans, we face the challenge, the challenge of understanding human behaviors. How many laws do we need? Is, is it three or four? Unfortunately, dealing with the human become much, much more complex. Take language, for example. What a model underlies language generation. We have English grammar books with over 1,000 pages, but the just describe the language. They don't explain how language is generated. This is why dealing with the human behavior requires a new mindset and a new approach, which is where the data driven method come into play. Computer, no problem. They can remember easily huge amount of the information, include the grammar rules. Google has shown that by providing a computer with an extensive language database, they can understand patterns, structures, relationship between the words in different languages. And they can use them to perform rather good translation. More exciting open AI demonstrate with the chat GPT that by feeding internet scale amount of text to computer, then computers can mimic the human languages and engage in conversation with us. So in summary, a data-driven approach offers us a fresh way to understand the sense. When characterizing one taste, we can no longer rely on Newton's law of the motion. Instead, by utilizing big data technology, we can establish how wine taste correlated with the factors like vintage, growing season temperature, winter rainfall. This forms a empirical law of the wine taste driven by the data. Now let's see fascinating power of the big data. In this approach, data scientists are free to use any kind of data sets. The idea is to encourage them to use their own creativity to uncover unexpected and valuable knowledge, patterns, and association from the data sets. Let's look at the classic uh, big data story. It's about uh, shopping in the supermarket. In the supermarket, there are millions of items. Of course, those items are not isolated. There must be some kinds of meaningful correlations. For example, through sales data analysis, one found that sales of beers is strongly correlated with the sales of diapers. Of course, the baby doesn't drink the beers. Actually, why? It was due to the buying behavior of the young fathers. So today, to handle big data, we need first to find such kind of correlation. We have to find that from X to Y. Then we can use the machine learning to learn the mapping from X to Y. Or we say that we can learn how to use the X to predict Y. So this is the power. This is the value of the data analytics. 
Macassing is the method a retailer uses big data can pot potentially increase its margin by more than 60%. Of course, here we have to be very careful. With the data driven, we may come with a spurious pattern association. Just like here I show you, you see this knowledge and experience photo. You see that here is the data, these are the patterns, we get the pattern from data. If you go too much creativity, you may see a cat. Of course, this is too much and it's overreaching. So this is due to the phenomena called overfitting. Spurious relationship is due to the overfitting. In machine learning language, overfitting happens when people have too many hypotheses and have not enough data to tell them apart. So in summary, when we're talking about the unreasonable effectiveness of big data, we say that big data can give us unexpected benefit, which can revolutionize the way we approach problem solving and decision making. Thank you.